moment we all be waiting for is finally here. Next.js 15 is stable and ready for production. List of changes is really big as you can see on Next.js public GitHub repository, but we are going to focus on what are the most important changes in Next.js 15. So I'm going to start from the first one that is most important for me at least, and that's support for React 19. If you don't know, React 19 is currently in the RC phase or the release candidate phase, which is the strong release, which is probably going to be the final release and stable build for React 19. And Next.js team made a decision to align with the upcoming release of React 19. So basically they're supporting React 19 RC and once the stable version is out, they're going to merge it extremely easily. In React 19, we are going to get, actually we are already getting in Next.js 15, these four new hooks. So use form status, use action state, use optimistic and use. You probably tried this one if you are waiting for React 19. I can't wait to use use and use optimistic hooks in real code in, on real projects. I'm not going to talk too much about React 19. I'm just going to leave this link if you want in the description. And to continue, everything is well tested and won't affect existing app router users. And therefore the Next.js team decided to release Next.js 15 as stable as now. So your projects are fully prepared for React 19. That's really sweet of them and releasing, I'm really surprised they released Next.js 15 one week before the Next.js conference. I was expecting it's going to happen on the, the conference day, like last year when they released Next.js 14, but here it is one week earlier. Next breaking change that I wanted to show you, and that's probably the most interesting and the most wanted part for Next.js, and that's caching. So a lot of people were annoyed by the caching from Next.js and I also had some problems with caching and a lot of times I have to delete the whole .nextjs folder like if you can see here this one and then after that things start to work and now Next.js team heard us so here you can read that based on your feedback we re-evaluated our caching heuristics if it's if it's pronounced like that and how they would interact with projects like partial pre-rendering and with third-party libraries using fetch so basically they're changing the caching default for fetch requests and get root handlers and client router cache from cached by default to uncached by default so if you want your data to be cached for example if we check their example here we need to put explicitly cache force cache or no store cache. So you know that part when we are fetching the data and we have something kind of like 10 stack query inside Next.js and if we change the page, the data is still the same, it's cached. So in this example here, this is Next.js 14, we are getting our users on our main page and this one is using fetch. So this one is automatically cached. And in future with Next.js 15, we would have to put this part on our fetch here and only then we are able to cache it like before. This one is changing a little bit the way how we think about fetching the data and we need to be aware that we need to put these things if we are caching inside an XJS, if we are not using 10 stack TRPC or whatever. So this one is a really important and breaking change. So here we can see that in Next.js 14, force cache was used by default if a cache option was not provided unless a dynamic function or dynamic config option was used. And now we can manually choose whatever cache option do we want and we can use it according to our project, to our needs and to our will. <laughs> it is also important to mention that get route handlers are no longer cached by default and client router cache no longer caches page components by default. So we have to be aware of all of these things that are including caching 
it's going to feel different probably when we install Next.js for the first time, but we need to get used to it if we don't want those caching problems anymore. Next breaking change that I'd like to show is this one. I didn't expect that they're going to do this, the async request APIs. So in traditional server-side rendering, the server waits for a request before rendering any content. And what they basically did is that they transitioned APIs that rely on request-specific data, such as headers, cookies, params, and search params to be asynchronous. What that means is that we have to await for our cookies, for our headers, etc. And that basically means that we need to be in a server component and this cannot be done inside a client component. That's again something else that we need to be aware of and we need to get used to it. So next change I wanted to show you is the Turbo Pack Dev, which is now stable. If you like the numbers, this is the change for you. So they announced that that's stable and ready to speed up your development. So for example, with Vercel.com, a large Next.js app we've seen up to 76.7 faster local server startup, up to 96.3 faster code updates, etc., etc. So this is like, you know, when the new iPhone is coming out and you read how much the processor is faster and everything. So that's the thing uh, here. Same with the Turbo Pack dev. It's cool. Not something really breaking, but cool. Next change that I'm really happy about is the ESLint 9 support. You know why? It's not that I, I, I honestly don't know what is exactly going on in ESLint 9. I, I have to read about it. But what annoyed me is when I was updating my packages, the only package that I couldn't update is this ESLint 8. So each time I was upgrading all the packages, this was the only package that they couldn't upgrade. And now finally, I have ESLint, I mean, we have ESLint 9. I would say those were the most important updates in Next.js 15. And here we can also mention this one, static indicator, new visual indicator shows static routes during development. That's really cool. Then we have this unstable after API experimental that executes code after response finishes streaming. That's interesting. We'll see how is that going to work. So here, if we check, so when processing a user request, the server typically performs tasks directly related to computing the response, but you need to perform tasks such as logging, analytics, etc. And here we can now put experimental to say after true. And then we can here, if you see, this is the layout. So here we can put this after, and then we can log when the primary task finishes, then we can log whatever we like inside of our component. Then we have here the instrumentation.js API stable, new API for server lifecycle observability. That one is also really cool. I'm going to put this link inside the description below so you can read about it more detailed than I am now. And this is also cool, enhanced forms. So enhanced HTML forms with client side navigation. Then this one is really cool. I'm really happy about this, that the next config finally is not .js. It supports TypeScript. So now we have next config.ts. Then we have the self-hosting improvements, more control over cache control headers, server action security, unguessable endpoints, etc. Then we have bundling external packages, new config options for app and pages router. And we read about ESLint support. And final thing is the development and build performance. So build time is much more quicker and we have faster refresh. And that's it. Tell me in the comments below, what do you think about new Next.js 15 release? And are you going to attend the Next.js conference? I'm going to definitely be there virtually, of course. I'm not going to America this time. And we can meet all on Discord channel and chat about new things on the Next.js conference.